Right. Um, the other thing you mentioned, which I think may be in some sense the most important factor in all of this, is I think you have pointed to a conspicuous lack of humor on the <laughs> of the movement. <laughs> it's uh, amazing, actually. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And it is, I, I think it is the thing that frightens me most. Yeah. You know, yeah. I have this, this, when students used to ask me, they asked me for advice about all sorts of things because at Evergreen, we knew our students really, really well. So many of them were friends at one level or another. And I used to tell them, uh, you should not consider marrying anyone who does not have a sense of humor about themselves. <laughs> They're just not marriage material, um, right? Because you're going to need the sense of humor. Everybody's got to have a sense of humor about themselves just to navigate something as complex as marriage. For sure. So anyway, that's an aside about marriage. But the point is, the lack of a sense of humor on the part of this movement tells you something about a kind of um, rigidity of thinking and a, um, I, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's a very cold, frightening uh, absence. Yeah. And once you spot it, you can't miss it. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I just wrote about this uh, last week, actually, that, you know, the, the 60s liberation movements, um, they had this enormous power uh, to spread because they were incredibly attractive to people, even, even who were politically resistant to them. The music was great. The comedy was amazing. Like, even people who were abject racist they they listened to richard pryor's comedy and they they couldn't help themselves they laughed right and be, and i think it was because that movement was very much about celebrating the common humanity of people they were trying to dig down and and get to deeper truths about all of us and even if it was kind of uh, disturbing and unpleasant like they were going to put it out there and um and that was really liberating for everybody. And, and it was a very attractive message. You know, I think that's what I was trying to do is contrast that with this, which has no art, no, no music, no, and certainly no comedy, right? There's the, 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 the there's no such thing as, as comedy in, in this conception. It's actually, uh, it's almost definitionally impossible because, comedy by its nature is daring and it's iconoclastic in all directions, right? The, the, the urge to be funny always ends up dressing down everybody, not just a specific target. Uh, you know, it's not just the emperor who has no clothes, it's everybody, right? So uh, when you're trying to have a very didactic politics, comedy just doesn't go well with it, you know? And, um, and, I, and that's a conspicuous weakness of this movement I, I think a lot about, there was a book uh, I read a long time ago, um, it was a biography of Lenin called The Bolsheviks that was written by this historian, Adam Ulam, who's a very funny writer uh, himself, but he was obsessed with Lenin and it shines through in the book that the thing, it, it's almost an admiration. Like he was, he was amazed by the scale of Lenin's humorlessness. <laughs> uh, and, and he, he, it was almost like a, a 700 page ode to a person who was incapable of laughing. Right. Uh, and that feels a little bit like what we're dealing with, with a lot of this new ideology. Like you, you, you just can't believe that in any, in every direction you look, there's, there's no possibility of like any kind of relief or looseness or anything. It just gets, it gets tighter and tighter. <laughs> so uh, it's fascinating, you know, and also it's weird because young people by their nature want to joke and, and they don't, you know, uh, and I, I don't, I don't know where it leads. Honestly, it's, it's strange. Well, so I have a, an evolutionary take on this, which is okay. that, um, humor is actually a mechanism whereby we discover what hangs out on the fringes of our consciousness. You know, if somebody makes a joke, and it reveals, if people laugh, and it's organic laughter rather than that stupid applause that you see people do these days when somebody makes a joke, if they earnestly laugh, you can actually tell that they know the truth of that statement, right? Mm -hmm. And it may, be, it may not be a straightforward truth, but there's some truth in it, and they know it, and you know it, and now you both know that each other knows it, right? So um, evolutionarily, humor is like a mechanism for exploring things that are 
at the fringes of consciousness, often because they're a bit uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like signing on to an acknowledgement that, yeah, we all know that thing is true, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so the flip side of this is if your movement is composed at least at the level of what it claims of pure nonsense, A, humor is almost inconceivable because humor would reveal that you know how feeble these arguments are or you don't, and that makes you even more of a fool. Right. Right? Yep. So the point is we're not going to even allow joking because if we allowed joking, that'd be it. Movement right. would be over in an hour, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's the frightening thing is that the humorlessness kind of goes along with a power grab that cannot afford to be candid, cannot afford for anybody to be candid about what they see and know about how it functions and what it's after. Um, yeah, and I, 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 you're absolutely right. But that, I, that's, I think it's a huge weakness, though, of, of this thing, because people just, they just can't go for long without laughing at something, you know? Um, and this, this, uh, this movement has gotten progressively more and more uh, constrained and paranoid and uh, unable to uh, have any kind of sense of humor about itself. Uh, you know, the, even, even like commercial humor, like the Saturday Night Live version of humor, um, it, it was bad enough when basically all the jokes that you saw on television where Putin coming down the chimney or some other thing where there's like a overt leaden political message attached to it. But you don't even really get that anymore. Like there's, there's just not even an attempt. And, um, you know, pe people want something there. Eventually somebody is going to be brave and funny enough to come up and just rip through it the way Richard Pryor did, you know, like there's, there's going to be just a genius, uh, you know, a Lenny Bruce type who's going to take advantage of the this constricted atmosphere and uh and it's i think that's going to be devastating to it you know once the right comedian mixes with this material which is amazing material uh it's it's going to be devastating yeah i think i think we can say two things for sure one you just said which is that somebody is going to figure out how to do this and it's going to be devastating and the other thing we can say is that it's going to be dave Chappelle. Which is great. <laughs> right. yes that's true that's true yeah. yeah you can tell i mean he he's he's the perfect person to do it uh and he's uncancelable um so yeah i, I think we await uh, with interest to see how how he but you know he, he's gonna have to commit to it when he does it too you know what i mean it's gonna have to be yeah. an ongoing like slugfest so uh yeah. Personally, I'm hoping that his August calendar is clear for that job because I don't know how much longer we can hold out. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yep. All right. So uh, 